This is one of the easiest and cheapest ways to brew beer. Today, we're brewing beer. In this video, I'll show you all the steps of the beer brewing process and how it can be done with a single kettle. And I'll show you some equipment alternatives you can use to keep your gear cheap and simple. Let's brew some beer. The brewing method I'm using today is called brew in a bag, or B-I-A-B -B for short. This is an easy and also one of the fastest ways to brew beer at home with basic equipment that you might already have on hand. But listen, you do not need to use exactly what I have here. The purpose of this video is just to show you the process. There are tons of different equipment options and alternative gear you can use. The first piece of equipment you'll need is a kettle. I'm using an electric kettle, but you can use really any size and type of kettle that you like. You just need something big enough for your batch size, plus a few extra gallons of headspace, and of course something you can boil in. It's also super convenient to have a drain near the bottom. Some come with them, or you can even install one on your own. This makes it a lot easier when you need to transfer the liquid out at the end. The next item you'll need is a bag or a basket for your grain. I'm using a cheap nylon mesh bag, but there are some really cool stainless steel baskets out there that are specifically designed for brewing beer. The purpose of this is to contain the grain, and it also lets the liquid drain out when we remove it from the kettle at the end of the mash. The last item you'll need is a fermenter. I'm using a food grade plastic bucket, but there are many different options here. The main features you'll want to look for are a food grade container and something with a lid that can be vented. The purpose of the vent is to allow carbon dioxide to escape during fermentation, but it prevents air from getting back into the fermenter. The lid I'm using has a check valve built into the lid. All we have to do on this one is flip the orientation so the gas can get out. You can install a drain valve on your bucket or install an auto siphon to transfer the beer out after fermentation. Now that we discussed the gear, let's get ready to brew. The first main step of brewing is the mash. This is when you mix in your brewing grains with hot water to create a sweet liquid called wort. Before I add in the grains, I'm gonna add water to the system and preheat it to 157 degrees, which is about five degrees above my desired mash temperature. system has preheated to 157 degrees. I'm gonna insert my grain bag. I'm gonna use some clamps just to hold this on there so it doesn't slip in when I add the grain. But now I'm gonna add in the grains and the goal is to kind of slowly and evenly mix in the grains with the hot water. You want to stir the grain so that you avoid getting any dough balls in there. It's basically just clumps of grain that prevent water from evenly penetrating the grain. So after adding in our grains, our system has cooled to 152 degrees. So the goal for the next 40 minutes is to keep that temperature stable. So we might need to add some heat during the process just to make sure that temperature doesn't change. The 40 minute mash is complete. I'm now gonna bump the temperature up to 170 degrees for the mash out step. The mash out step helps increase our efficiency a bit by allowing the fluid to easily drain out of the grain. If you use a stainless steel basket, they typically have some sort of support built into them so that you don't have to hold it during drain. But today, we're getting a little workout in with our grain bag. Now that all the wort has drained out, I'm gonna kick on the power to 100% and bring this up to a boil. At this stage, you wanna keep a close eye on your kettle because you don't wanna have any boil overs. This can create a really sticky mess. So if you notice it's starting to foam up and beginning to boil over, kill power and let it settle down. 
The goal is to keep a rolling boil, but you don't necessarily need power set to 100%. The boil is also a great time to add your hops. Hops are a leafy, greenish cone-shaped flower that are packed full of an oily resin that contributes bitterness, some flavor, and tons of aroma to your beer. They typically come in a pellet form like this. Without hops, the beer will likely be overly sweet and lacking flavor. The boil is finished, I'm now going to turn off the power and start a whirlpool. I'm using a sanitized spoon to stir this into a vortex. After the boiling process, you want to make sure that anything that touches your wort is properly clean and sanitized. The whirlpool allows all of the sediment and solid material in the wort to form a fairly dense and compact cone in the center of the kettle. By doing this, we can limit the amount of solid material that we transfer to the fermenter. Once we get a good whirlpool going, we'll want to allow this to come to a stop and rest for about 10 minutes. time to cool down the wort as quickly as possible to room temperature. One option for cooling is to submerge your entire pot or kettle in an ice bath, as long as it doesn't have any electrical components. But mine does, so I'm gonna add some chilled water to my bucket and then drain the wort on top of that. Now that all the wort is drained out of the kettle, I'm gonna top it off with some more chilled water to make sure that temperature drops down to room temperature. At this stage, it's best to add pure oxygen to the wort for proper yeast health. Yeast need an adequate supply of oxygen to stay healthy and provide a good fermentation. If you don't have pure oxygen, you can aerate the wort by letting it splash around as you drain it off into the fermenter. And if you're using buckets like I am, you can pour the wort back and forth between those buckets to encourage that aeration. Now that the wort is cooled and aerated, I'm gonna add in my yeast. I'm using some yeast from a previous batch that I have inside of this jar. You can buy brand new yeast from your local homebrewing supply store or even order it online. If you're using liquid yeast, you typically wanna use about two packets for a five gallon batch or about 23 grams of dry yeast. Now, all we have to do is let this ferment for the next one to two weeks. It's best to keep this in a cool location, somewhere around 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also important to keep this in a dark location away from direct sunlight. So a closet or a dark room works great. Thank you guys so much for hanging out for Brew Day. If you want to learn more about brewing beer, make sure to like this video and check out the other brewing videos here on my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.